Good morning. Boy, I sure am glad it's Friday. You know we could just hold all bill and go home if you want to. Y'all bow with me. Gracious and good Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessings. Thank you for standing with us when we do wrong. Thank you for giving us when we do wrong. Give us a little bit of sense so that we do things that might please you. And when we don't, thank you so much for forgiving us. Let this be a better day. Let this group have a wonderful weekend and a safe one. I ask these in my Savior's name. Amen. Uh, I'm going to recognize the leader for a comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We are really extra blessed this morning to have with us uh, one of the finest ladies I ever had the pleasure of knowing here a long time ago and one of the best representatives that ever served in this house. We're joined today by our great friend from Savannah, Georgia, former representative Miss Ann Mueller back there. She's truly one of a kind. Okay, okay, okay. I I want to ask my committee: Was music playing when y'all came in? The grand march or anything like that? Did Did you see a police escort anywhere for your chairman? Do you see anything except the wedding ring on my hand? Have I asked y'all all to rise when I walk in? No, sir. <laughs> that, that was probably just you. We are certainly thrilled to have in our presence those of us who most humbly bow to he who must be obeyed on the other side, uh, the rules chairman for the Georgia State Senate. They all know you ain't getting nothing. <laughs> the producer of wonderful outside your door show me things on and his favorite subject uh, far works <laughs> those of you who voted for that are not going to get nothing I will tell you that uh, he came to my committee dinner and he did set off sparklers. <laughs> show, show him your blister, big one. Come on, I want us to. He burned his little finger. <laughs> I was hoping it blew that thing off. Oh, what happened to you? Fireworks, there ain't nothing wrong with me. Uh, as is my custom, you can jump to the front of the line. Mr. Chair, what a delightful pleasure it is to be here with you today. And, and I'd have to say the, uh, the demonstration of um, some bill I have in front of my door is just to try to understand the voting pattern of the House. 
And I just happened to choose in random one of Representative uh, uh, Roberts' bill just to see how that kind of went. So anyway, that's the only reason it's out there. It means nothing if other you, than that. <laughs> and if you need a police escort, I can arrange that for you. Anytime. I don't need one. I know you don't. <laughs> I, Everybody likes me. I know that's true, Mr. Chair. Uh, when you figure out the random voting pat pattern of the members of the House of Representatives, would you mind dropping that by so yeah, that somebody yes, else will understand same, what I, we it, do? It's reciprocal in the Senate, too. We have the same kind of scratch-your-head moments occasionally. Well, you've had all your time. Thank you for coming over. Okay. Here. You're not going to let me talk about my bill? Right. Why, well, your daggum bill, you know, you put my stuff down there in Class 5. Class 5. On, on your little yellow sheet. And I have this wonderful blue sheet that, that doesn't have any bills on it, I noticed. I, I noticed it, it's the first time I've seen more than one senator at a time. Well, I've, and uh, I had to call one of them, tell him to come. I've relayed the message that we're in a caucus meeting now. As you know, we're dealing with a great uh, issue, transportation. And they'll be on the floor today. So uh, we hope to move that forward so we can work together to have a great, successful ending. Well, I wouldn't want it to be a secret. Boy, I sure do like to see how that vote comes out and how everybody voted. Oh. Yes, sir. I'll be sure to get those those members <laughs> to you. But, however, as as a show of good faith for my counterpart across the building, he has a bill. Yeah, Mr. Chair, and thank you for hearing me. Now, for some reason, I'm sure it's just an error that it's not on the blue sheet here, but Senate Bill 72 <laughs> deals oh, with police dogs and uh, when one is killed in the line of duty. Now, I've had a lot of crazy people think that I was putting the life of a dog in front of a life of an unborn child. I've had a lot of crazy people out there think that I'm putting the life of a dog in front of the life of a human being. That's simply not the case. It's just to help to file the criminal case and the prosecution and uh, help uh, with autopsies and other things regarding the police dog that is killed in the line of duty. Representative Weldon be handling this bill. And that's all I have to say, except that um, I welcome the House to the Senate Rules Committee. Look forward to working with them to push good legislation through the uh, General Assembly this year. That sounded pretty good. Is there anything you else? Have, you have questions. Yes, sir. Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To my friend up there, um, because I have three bills currently <laughs> in the Senate, I would like to officially ask that we move on Senate Bill 72. Thank you. Uh, second. <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble here, Chairman Hamilton. Mr. Chair, I'll be glad. Well, it sure has been good seeing you. You too, Mr. and Mullis. thank you. Uh, we'll break You're bread invited soon. back anytime you want to. And, you'd and bring more than three of your friends. Oh, you ain't got but three friends. But <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Jeffries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee members. I have Senate Resolution 266, which is the annual State Properties Conveyance Bill and Senate Resolution 267 that deals with easements. Anybody got questions of Mr. Jeffries? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Tippins, I thought you spent all your time here yesterday. I thought I did too, but I enjoyed it. This is such a rare privilege. It's just like when you're a kid and you get to eat ice cream two days in a row. It's a real privilege to be Maybe back. you should be in Mr. Mullis' spot. You're a little bit nicer. I'd like to re-ask for Senate Bill 2. I think we went over it in detail yesterday, and I do have one answer for uh, Chairman Roberts about the question about 16. That is a that is the age of admission to technical college units. You have to be 16 to apply.
Mr. Roberts. Just, just clarify, uh, and, and, and I, I do like the bill. I, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. So let me ask this question. So in other words, if a, if a technical college or a college is coming to that high school to teach the class at that high school, this child is not if it's in a college and career academy, if the technical college is coming, if it's delivered on site, they, they can take the, the courses at 15. Okay, so the 16 would not apply in those, that. Those, I th if it's my understanding, those would only apply to the students who are going to the actual campuses of the technical college. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate your favorable consideration. Mr. Harper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the committee. I uh, have three bills, all under modified structure. Uh, Senate Bill 62 deals with uh, jurisdiction in regards to superior courts and probate courts. Uh, in regards to night hunting violations. Uh, this is uh, all supported by all the courts uh, and the Department of Natural Resources. Senate Bill 112 uh, deals, is a department DNR bill and it deals with the uh, hunting um, deer as well and as far as how you report that and we're, uh, we're making some changes in the law to give DNR the authority to give you the ability as the hunter to have a app on your phone uh, or other device that you can do that via phone instead of via paper tag. And Senate Bill 139 is a reduction in business regulation bill that, uh, uni that uniformly applies business regulation across our state, Mr. Chairman. And I would ask for your favorable consideration of all three. The Minority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Harper, on Senate Bill 62, line 17. Um, I don't have a copy of it. I'm sorry, Madam Leader. It's okay. The language refers to violations of such laws uh, that are of high and aggravated nature, uh, which would be an unusual set of jurisdiction to grant to a probate court. Can you talk about which, uh, under Title 27, what type of uh, deer, what type of hunting violations could occur that would be of that level? Under high and aggravated nature, it would it would basically be those that were uh, um, of of uh, that is a good question actually. <laughs> it would be those violations of high and aggravated nature, Madam Leader. If, if you <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that. I appreciate you taking care of me, too, Mr. Chairman. So, back to the, uh, the, the question. Under current code, all violations of 27 code are heard in probate court except for these specific areas. Uh, these are the only areas that are not heard in probate court. These specifically are heard in superior court. This does not mean that these violations cannot be moved to superior court if so deemed necessary by the Department of Natural Resources or if requested by the defendant. Um, so we can still move these violations to superior court if needed, if the department deems necessary uh, due to the nature of the violation. Um, I can't specifically ask the question as to what would be considered high and aggravated nature in a hunting violation. I would have to refer that to the department and the law enforcement division thereof. Uh, I apologize for that, but that's the, the goal behind this is to, to allow the probate courts to, to oversee all violations under 27 code unless the department deems necessary to move it to superior court or if a defendant requests otherwise. Uh, thank you. Yes, if, if we could um, get information regarding that, simply will, because that is a very specific type of crime. I will and ask the department to get me that information. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Knight. And, and in Mr. Harper's defense, he was just, no, he and I had worked out that he would come Monday, and he was just notified before we opened the doors 
to, to show up. Mr. Knight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, to my friend, uh, uh, one of these acts of high and aggravated nature, would that be night hunting, maybe over bait such as corn? No, I'm just if you're not in the southern zone, not hunting bait over hunting over bait would not be and would not apply. But in the northern zone, it would under current law, and maybe we can change that one day, Representative no, Knight. No, no, you can't either. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be it would include multiple violations of hunting deer at night. Those would be in, included in that. A first violation is listed, but multiple violations would be. Uh, considered under high and aggravated nature, et cetera, things of that nature. Yes. Are probably even like repeat violations. Uh, yes. Uh, repeat offenders, uh, habitual offenders, probably. That's right. That is correct. Mr. Weldon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Harper. What problem does this bill remedy? The probate court, 662, the, the one we're discussing currently? Yes. Okay. Basically, what is happening is uh, probate courts have been hearing these cases, and unbeknownst to them until a couple of months ago did they realize that they were pro prohibited from hearing these cases by law. So in, in conjunction with Superior Court and the probate court and the, the, the board, the uh, administrative office of the courts uh, and their team huddle, so to speak, decided that it would be best if they moved everything under probate court as they have general jurisdiction over those codes anyway. Uh, and uh, the Superior Courts thought it was a, a good idea, probate courts thought it was a good idea because they've basically been hearing these cases anyway and, and uh, under current law didn't have that authority to do so. So we're just trying to fix that, one, and two, uh, just trying to bring everything under the same jurisdiction. As, as I said earlier, all 27 code violations are heard in probate court anyway, except for these. Uh, and the other thing is this, under, under old, the, previously, we would uh, take your truck, take your gun, take your light. We don't, that doesn't happen anymore. And the asset forfeiture issue is the reason it was sent to Superior Court. And because we don't do those things anymore, we, there is no need to send it to Superior Court because there's not an asset forfeiture issue involved. Uh, and because that issue is not involved, these violations can go to probate court now. Uh, and it is, uh, and as I said, it's, it was, uh, worked out between all of the courts and the Supreme Court supports this as well and the Department of Natural Resources supports the move. Does that answer? That does. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good job. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, I appreciate it. Ms. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I bring before you today House Resolution 601. It's a study committee looking into the issues of saltwater intrusion in the coastal areas near Chatham County and the ports. There are certain areas designated red and yellow zones, which is um, where the problem of saltwater intrusion is more intense. With the growth of the port, with the addition of the statewide water plan and the principles espoused therein, this will give us a chance one more time to look at this issue. Any questions of Ms. Smith? Mr. Stevens. Mr. Chairman, I also want to put my name beside House Resolution 601, but I certainly hope it can be moved to a um, modified structured if at all possible, so that it doesn't get weighted down. This issue needs to be studied in a hurry. Okay. Mr. Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Going back to 601, oh, Madam Chairman, we, um, we studied this several years ago, correct? And we had the issue there in Bryan County and all was, was moving over. Is this kind of like a continuation of that or, I mean, or, I mean, I'm all for it because I know they got issues over there, especially in the agriculture community. Can, can May I respond, Mr. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. 
first of all, we have a lot more information and access to information than we did. Uh, I think I can just tell us it was the early 21st century when we studied like around 2004, around in that period of time. And um, we were aware also of a spot in the Brunswick area, but that is um, detail and information could isolate that area. In the port area, in the Chatham County area such as that, um, there's been no alleviation of that problem. So if you're looking at the water issue itself, the statewide water plan said to study population forecast, economic forecast, and water quality and quantity. And with the growth of the port and those issues right there, and with what we hope is more information, that's where we intend to focus our study. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Weldon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to also ask for um, Senate Bill 72. This bill contains two modifications that include two House bills. <clears throat> the first is in section or part one, section 1-1. One -one. It uh, takes care of a hole in the law where a person who has incest with a, um, a an adult had incest with a child that or, or a person that is uh, uh, related by half blood, uh, they can still be prosecuted for incest. And it was, this resolves the problem in the statute that a uh, uh, a court. I think it's a Supreme Court case overturned a conviction. Um, and then in part two, um, this is an update of the harassing phone call um, bill or law. And what this does is it brings it up to date and includes email, text messaging, and other electronic communication that's threatening, harassing, uh, molesting, or intimidating. Um, and that's that's short statement of what that bill is. It just updates it to modern standards. That's 72? The Senate Bill 72, yes, sir. Mr. 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 Chairman. Moses. Chairman Moses. Okay. It's, it's, it's on the uh, yellow sheet, and I'll, I'll wait for it to get to the blue sheet. Thanks, sir. Anybody else? All right. This is for Monday. Uh, at the recommendation of Mr. Stevens, we're going to move H.R. 601 to modified structure. Okay, and then to move it onto the floor. Any opposed? It's on. Under modified structure, SB 62. Any opposition? It's on. Under modified structure, SB 112, any opposition? Okay, that's twice as many bills as they've done.